camaraderie. Uh, these these guys had a lot of camaraderie. They got to hang out with graduate students. They got to see what it's really like to do research. That it's not just you're not just there on your own. You're working with a lot of other people, collaborating all the time. So it's it's really it's, it's a great time. They have a good sense of humor. They like the food. <laughs> <laughs> They're mini grad students. They're mini grad students. Yeah, there you go. All right. So now we're ready to start our presentations. Um, so first up is Monasa. Which computer are you going to use? Yes. Okay. Um, so. So they're probably going to be a little bit nervous, <laughs> and they probably are going to be even more more nervous because we have a little timer, and we told them they're going to have their heads cut off if they go over the time limit. So it's a good good to learn a little pressure. <laughs> oh, you know what you might want to do? Let's get it off and get over. I've taught them all the little tricks of PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Oh, Mama said too. Sorry. The timer? Oh, hi. Does it sound like it's on one? I am Monisa Gurumurthy, and I'm from Monta Vista High School. And today I will be presenting on what I've been working on these past few weeks, which is using the finite element method to model thermal distribution on a graphene surface. So first, I'll give you a quick overview about the project as a whole. So the material study was, had three layers, and at the very bottom was a layer of silicon. And this layer was about two millimeters thick. And right above it is a layer of silicon dioxide. And this layer is etched. So basically what that means is that every couple hundred nanometers, there is a hole in the silicon dioxide layer. And this layer was about a 300 nanometers. And at the very top was a layer of graphene. And graphene, in other words, is an sp2 hybridized allotrope of carbon. And this layer was only one atom thin. And a laser shines on the graphene surface at a wavelength of 1550 nanometers. And this laser, the power on the surface was 10 millivolts. And it shines at a repetition rate of 1 gigahertz, which basically means that you're shining the laser and it's like you're turning it on and off at a billion times per second. So the point of focus for this project is the graphene drumhead. And the graphene drumheads are basically uh, the graphene membrane suspended over holes in an oxidized layer of silicon. And basically what it is is that there's this one atom thin layer of graphene, and then the hole in the silicon dioxide where the silicon dioxide is basically etched away, and then the two millimeter layer of silicon at the very bottom. And a scanning tunneling microscope, or SDM, is used to examine the graphene drumhead at an atomic level. And basically, it looks for the particular frequency at which the graphene drumheads are resonating. So when using the scanning tunneling microscope to examine the graphene membrane, the metal tip right here, um, is only four angstroms away from the graphene surface. 
So the thermal expansion of either the metal tip or the graphene surface could cause a change in the distance between the two. And this distance change is extremely significant because the thermal expansion is actually um, very important because the physical quantity measured by the SDM, which is the current, is exponentially dependent on the distance between the metal tip and the graphene surface. So it was necessary to observe and simulate the temperature distribution on the graphene surface as the laser shines on it. Also, the reason silicon was used versus any other material is because for the purposes of this experiment, the silicon does not affect the thermal distribution on the graphene surface. So I simulated the, the temperature distribution on the graphene surface using the finite element method. So the finite element method is basically a numerical technique to solve partial differential equations. And the real beauty of this technique is that sometimes even though you can solve partial differential equations by hand, by using the numerical method, you can solve those equations which cannot otherwise be solved. And it does it by converting these partial differential equations into linear algebraic equations. And the finite element method usually analyzes the relationship between stress and strain or the resulting deformation. But in this case, what it did was it analyzed the laser hitting the graphene surface and the resulting temperature distribution that occurred. So the finite element method, um, the way I use it was the weighted residual method. And the basic steps to the weighted residual method are the following. So you take the governing equation pictured on the right and you derive the strong form by using the boundary conditions and the governing equation. And you derive the weak form from the strong form. And then rearrange the weak form to make it matrix ready, so to speak. And program it in MATLAB and you get your simulation. So concept, on a conceptual level, the finite element method, what it basically does is that it takes a complicated domain and subdivides it into a series of smaller regions or elements. And by assembling the set of equations for each region or element, the behavior for the overall domain can be extrapolated. So on the right here, you can see a picture of a mesh that was used. And each small triangle, right here, each small triangle is an element. And by finding the value for each node or the, each corner of the triangles, the overall behavior was extrapolated. So how did I apply the finite element method to my project? So basically I analyzed the temperature distribution on the graphene surface upon the laser's impact. And these were the results I got. So the X and Y axes basically map out the XY position of the laser spot on the graphene surface. And I'll quickly just play it for you. And this is in fast motion. So you can see here that as the laser progresses to shine on the graphene surface, the heat, uh, the temperature increases, especially in the center. And by some rough calculations, the temperature at the center increases by about 20.5 Kelvin. And you can also see that the peripheral corners of the graphene surface increase in temperature as well, even though it doesn't increase as much as the center. So I'll play it once more for you. To better see the difference, the increase in temperature on the graphene surface, I've just taken screenshots of the um, beginning, middle, and end. So this is the beginning. The temperature is more towards the center. And as the laser progresses to shine, the, you can see that the temperature has spread, through, the increase in temperature has spread through the graphene surface, and even more so towards the end. <coughs> so the laser spot um, in the preceding pictures have really hit like the center of the graphene surface. And the temperature distribution when it hits towards the corners are slightly different. So you can see here that the laser hit right at the top um, top left corner, and the temperature distribution is a little more asymmetrical. And same for the bottom right and top left, top right. 
So here you can see really the 3D um, of what's happening. The laser is hitting the graphene surface and the temperature is really increasing and spreading throughout the surface. And once again, I'd like to point out that the silicon is used because it doesn't thermally affect what's happening on the graphene surface. <coughs> so there are several practical applications for these graphene drum heads. And one of these applications is the single atom detector. And basically, the frequency at which the graphene drum heads resonate as the laser hits the graphene surface correlates to its mass and thus its identity. And when an atom, which is not to scale, is set on the graphene drum head, then there is a change in frequency that can be used to identify which element this atom belongs to. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my mentors, Hufu and Aaron, and also Evie, Abby, Vicky, and all those who've made this program possible. Thank you. shows it as the laser continues to shine the entire time. Okay. And the laser is um, shining at a repetition rate of 1 gigahertz. So it's, it, you could compare that to like turning the laser on and off a billion times per second. Um, so the temperature that you calculated, will that change the, um, the expansion a, enough, or a lot? Will that have a big difference on the whole setup? Yeah, so since... Um, the quantity that's measured by the SDM is actually dependent on the distance. Yeah. The, so that's why we need this temperature distribution to see how much it changes the accuracy of the result. Um, does it, did you do any um, simulations to see if it depends on what kind of laser you're using or what frequency, or does it matter? Um, I'm pretty sure it does matter, but I used these frequencies. Okay. What was the frequency? I use 1515 nanometers and okay. one gigahertz. Okay. Uh, do you have a proposed explanation for like, the pattern of expansion? Like, is it through the phonons or the. I'm not sure what you're saying. So, if you, if you refer back to the images in the Senate where you had the uh, screenshots. So, like, do you have a proposed explanation for the expansion of the heat? It's basically expanding in circles. It looks like it's hexagons or like kind of like that because the resolution is not that good. Uh, okay. But it's it's expanding in circles. Okay. So do you have an explanation for why it's in a circle and not perhaps hexagonal? Doesn't it make sense to expand in circles? <laughs> Isn't it intuitive, yeah, but, I guess? But graphene is hexagonal, so I was thinking maybe it might have something to do with the arrangement of the card. It could be. <laughs> other potential applications for the finite element method? It seems like it could have a lot of potential in other topics or other studies. Yeah, so I mentioned like a couple weeks ago, you can use it in many things. So like one of them is like cardiothoracic surgery. So as you're cutting the heart, like you can see the stress that's on the heart. So like you can use blood pressure and see where you cut, um, where you take um, the incision by seeing where it's lower blood pressure and where it would affect the heart disease, etc. And it's also used in like crash simulations to see um, how, like to predict how the car's gonna crash, etc. Yeah. Anything else? So on the application slide where you put the item onto the graphene? Um, That's not the scale. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> how, how does that have to do with like shining a laser on Okay, so um, as the laser shines on the graphene, there's a certain frequency at which the graphene resonates. You understood that? So um, when you add, when you set the atom on the drum head, I believe um, the frequency changes, the resonating frequency, and that change in frequency can be used to figure out the mass and then to figure out the identity of the atom. The laser is basically just 
used to drive the resonator. Great, thank you. Thank you.